Super Mario Odyssey and Super Mario Sunshine, two of the last big 3D Mario games in the series. But which game is better? In this video I'm going to be comparing these two games and try and be as unbiased as possible to see which game comes on top. There are going to be 5 different categories in which I compare these two games by, those being the graphics, music, story, gameplay and level design. But without further ado, this is Super Mario Odyssey vs Super Mario Sunshine. So this is going to be quite an unfair comparison since Super Mario Sunshine is much older than Super Mario Odyssey, but we're going to go ahead and do it anyways. So Super Mario Sunshine has a very tropical setting and while it was limited to the GameCube in terms of graphics, what they managed to achieve with this system was really impressive at the time. The colours are really vibrant in this game. Since it is set on a tropical island, all of the colours just burst. And all of the cool effects like the heat rays and all of the water effects were really impressive for GameCube standards. So now let's look at Super Mario Odyssey. So straight away you can see this game runs at 60 frames per second and it has very cartoony animations. Small details such as the way Mario's nose and hat moves while you're jumping in the game and the lighting effects being excellent too, such as in the Wooded Kingdom as you can see the light seeming through the trees, really does help to bring this game to life. And since this game isn't restricted to one tropical setting like Super Mario Sunshine is, that means that there's a lot of colour palettes they can go and choose from throughout each kingdom you visit in the game. And with all that said, I'm going to give the win to this category to Super Mario Odyssey. Super Mario Sunshine uses the music of its game to try and really immerse yourself within the environment. A lot of the music tracks in this game use a very similar composition, but they're stylized differently for each different area of the game. A good example of this is Rickle Harbour and Galato Beach. Both levels use a similar composition, but each of the music tracks give a completely different feel to the game. There are some pretty lackluster tracks though, such as the boss theme, which can get really repetitive, though personally I think it's a really good track. Overall, the music of this game just fits the vibe and tone of Super Mario Sunshine really well. Super Mario Odyssey on the other hand has a much more varied soundtrack. A lot of the tracks use live instruments and that helps give a different feel to each kingdom in the game. Some of my personal favourites include the Shiveria Town music and the Lake Kingdom music. Personally I prefer the music of Super Mario Sunshine but I'm going to give this point to Super Mario Odyssey for being more varied and having a higher quality of instruments to play with. So the story of Super Mario Odyssey starts off with Bowser and Mario fighting straight away, which is a refreshing change from the usual Mario formula. Bowser has kidnapped Peach once again, but this time he wants to try and marry her. Mario gets kicked off of the airship and lands in the Cap Kingdom where he first meets Cappy, his new companion for this game. Bowser has also kidnapped Cappy's sister Tiara, so together they must join forces and save their loved ones from Bowser. You encounter Bowser many times through your adventure and helps to give you a further incentive to finally stop him. The ending to the game was also really great, but I won't show anything here due to major spoilers for the game. Super Mario Sunshine starts off with Mario and crew travelling to Isle Dolfino, a tropical island. Once they land on the airstrip, they notice that there's a lot of pink like goop all over the floor and Peach notices what seems to be a shadow type Mario character. It is here when Mario first meets Flood, the Flash Liquidizer Ultra Dowsing device that will aid him on his adventure. Once Mario cleans up all of the goop on this airstrip, he is taken away by the inhabitants of this island, the Piantas. There is goop all over the island and of course Mario is getting blamed for putting it all there when it was clearly the Shadow Mario character that Peach saw earlier. This has also scared off the Shine Sprites, the main power source of Isle Dolfino and helped to bring life to the world. 
Mario is now tasked to clean up all of the goop and to help recover the shine sprites so that he can bring life to this peaceful island once again. Later on in the story, this Shadow Mario character kidnaps Peach and he is revealed to be the newcomer of this game who is Bowser Jr. Once this revelation has been revealed, Bowser Jr. and Peach both head to Corona Mountain in which you must stop Bowser. An interesting thing to note here is that this is one of the few Mario games with full on voice acting. This helped to make the story feel way grander than it actually was and I appreciate the ambition Nintendo went for with this story. And for that, I'm going to give this point to Super Mario Sunshine. Super Mario Sunshine's gameplay consists of roaming around big open worlds to recover the shine sprites. The main gimmick of this game is Flood, which gives you access to some brand new abilities you've never had before. Flood allows you to hover in the air for a short period of time, as well as spray water to get rid of the goop that is across all of the islands. You can also find different nozzles for Flood, such as the rocket nozzle that allows you to jump up high in the air, and the turbo nozzle that lets you run and water and lets you go super fast. Aside from Flood, Mario's movement in this game feels very precise and it's an amazing game to control. Moves like the backflip, wall jump and spin jumps are super easy to perform because of Mario's precise movement and it makes you feel in full control of this game. Super Mario Odyssey changes things up with Cappy. The main gameplay gimmick of this game is being able to take control of almost any enemy and using their abilities. This adds a nice level of variety to the game, but it also makes you feel very limited compared to Mario's original moveset in this game. Speaking of, there are a lot of tricks you can perform, similar to Sunshine, but there are also some new abilities such as rolling down hills to gain momentum. The long jump also returns, but it feels super nerfed this time around, though it is great for gaining momentum on the ground. You can also jump on Cappy mid-air to gain a lot of serious height and to perform tricks you could never do in any previous Mario game. The game has great control, but issues like Mario feeling too slow make it feel worse to what Sunshine had already achieved. And it's because of this as to why I'm giving the point for this category to Super Mario Sunshine. Super Mario Sunshine's levels are the biggest and most expansive levels in 3D Mario history, apart from a couple of levels from Super Mario Odyssey. This game includes a hub world being Delfino Plaza, which has many things you can interact with. Such things include jumping on tight ropes, pipes, boats, running on buildings, and a lot more. This hub world just feels so alive, and so does the rest of the game. Every level in this game feels like a real place you could visit yourself and that's what I love about it. It feels so big, so expansive, so many things to do in each area that it just makes this game feel so fresh. Not to mention that each island in the game are interconnected so you can see other levels from the background of levels you are currently in and I just think that is really cool. There are also some secret challenge rooms in this game where Flood is taken away from you and you have to rely on Mario's acrobatic abilities alone to beat the stage. These stages are really well designed and use Mario's abilities to their full potential. The way in which you collect the Shine Sprites too are all mission based so each Shine Sprite you get feels rewarding. Super Mario Odyssey feels a lot more basic with its level design though. It feels like it took a lot of inspiration from Super Mario 3D World with how the worlds are structured. A lot of the kingdoms in this game feel like a bunch of linear sections stuck into one huge level rather than making one coherent, expansive, interconnected world. There are also challenge rooms in this game which are designed well sometimes but for a lot of the times I just find them really bland and especially with the visual that are represented in these challenge rooms it makes these stages really dull for me. I think some kingdoms are really well designed such as the Metro Kingdom and the Sand Kingdom but most of the kingdoms just are really basic. Not bad but really uninspired and just kind of boring. The way in which you collect the power moons as well just feels incredibly uninspired to me 
most of these moons feel like filler challenges in which you do really mundane stuff such as ground pound a certain spot, collect a seed and put it in a plant pot, or wear a certain costume. And it's because of this as to why I'm giving the point for this to Super Mario Sunshine. So as we can see, Super Mario Odyssey won graphics and music, whereas Super Mario Sunshine won story, gameplay and level design making the winner Super Mario Sunshine. Super Mario Odyssey is still a very well made game, but as for what a 3D Mario game should be, I feel like Super Mario Sunshine achieved this way better. But what do you guys think? Do you think Super Mario Sunshine was deserving of winning, or do you prefer Super Mario Odyssey? Let me know in the comment section below. I hope you all enjoyed this video, thank you all for watching, and I'll definitely make sure to catch you all later.